done stop motion with Tim? Because you, did you work on Vincent? I, I didn't work on Vincent. I mean, I yeah. was around. I, I saw Tim's concept um, for that. But um, Rick Heinrichs, who was Tim's original creative partner and worked on a lot of the features, uh, he was the emissary. He was he was the guy who actually um, introduced um, doing stop motion to Tim. Rick is a Academy Award winning production designer. And he's a great sculptor. He was the first person who actually saw in Tim's drawings, could imagine them as 3D things, and sculpted them, and I think changed the course of uh, history. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's get into uh, the nightmare. So, you, so, uh, so Tim uh, uh, got you involved with that, but it became you. You became the, you were the director. It was your your studio that did it? How, how was that done exactly? Was it done? It was done through Disney? Excuse my ignorance on the production history. Sure. Of that, but. I was up in the Bay Area that I, you know, felt like this is um, for myself, um, more creative place, less work but more creative. And Tim had stayed in LA. Um, I had this core group of people, and when this project came our way, all those core uh, people like <coughs> Eric Layton and Trey Thomas, Mike Belzer, Anthony Scott. Uh, you see how super talented animators, uh, everyone became like supervisors, everyone sort of branched up. We did it with Disney. They sent a producer, Kathleen Gavin. She's the real producer of the film, and she was fantastic. And we basically took over some warehouses um, where a couple of live action films had been shot, and uh, just south of Market area, kind of, kind of a rundown part of the city, and we just sort of grew a feature film. We had no fear. We had uh, no sense like, wow, we don't know what we're doing. We could fail. Uh, we just were so excited because there hadn't been a stop motion feature, I think, ever, except for Mad Monster Party. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so it's like, hey, this beats the Doughboy, and, and Tim's basic story was really great. Danny Elfman had written a few songs and Caroline Thompson came in to write the screenplay after we started the movie. We basically <laughs> just, we did a couple of tests, um, kind of got the go ahead. It was, it was very low budget, and Disney just figured, well, we'll give this gift to Tim, and he'll come back to Disney and do films like Batman for us. Of course, he came back and did Ed Wood Jr., right. a masterpiece, right. I think, other, <laughs> but not exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and we made the film. I worked with Joe Ramp, an old friend of, of mine from Disney, and Tim's friend as head of storyboard, uh, Mike Chuelik, and Ian. Um, we grew the movie. We brought it to life. And we had zero creative interference. The Disney people, Jeffrey Katzenberg was head of the right there. He could see things, he could see reels, and he could make all these comments, but he had no right to change anything. It was great. And Tim was busy making <laughs> Batman Returns. Yeah. And then he made Edward Jr. So he was really busy. We just sent him things. And I think we, we shot one shot. And at the end of the movie, he showed up with his editor, Chris Levins, on cut out two beautiful minutes of animation. But it, it was a good thing. It paced the film up. So it was an incredible experience. And I thought, oh, that's great. That's how life will be. <laughs> um, Coraline is the first film since that film where we got everything right again. 